Hello again, Godonuts, and welcome to my second Godot game development tutorial. This one is quite excellent if I have to say so myself when combined with the first tutorial that I released earlier today regarding exporting for Android. You can find the link to that in the description below. This particular video is going to be a lot simpler. The idea is to just make a little guide so you can easily implement touch to move for 3D environments. Godot makes this fairly straightforward, so it's easy to just use a very short little script. I've made a gist for this script and provided the link in the description as well, but we're going to go over how it works here. The first step is to make a simple 3D scene and set it as the default scene. Here you can see I have a root spatial node and a camera, and I'm just going to add a few sprite 3Ds to it. I've downloaded a bunch of assets from kenny.nl to use because that site has basically some of the best free assets I've ever found. So I'm going to do this with Sprite 3Ds to begin simply because they are basically the easiest to work with. Um, as you can see they're placed at a decent position from where my camera is. They're at the origin. I've pulled the camera back a little bit. We're going to just go ahead and add an ambulance and it's upside down, that's fine, we don't really care. I'm going to show you in a little bit how to do it with 3D objects as well, but for now, if we work with sprites, we can just do it fairly easily. Now, you should go to the site, the gist that I provided, copy it, and we're going to add the script here. I already have the script built, uh, so I'm just going to go select it here in my scripts. I've called mine Simple Move. And it works on spatial, so you can actually add it to any of the 3D objects and it should work just fine, assuming that you have the setup the same. Something that's important to note that this script uses, it checks for the UI tapped action. This is not a default. I've gone ahead into project settings and added it through the input map here. And all it is is the left mouse button. Normally you would have UI accept for that or a few different things you can have for that, but I prefer to just make my own and have it be the left mouse button. This will translate on Android to be a tap of the screen, so you don't really have to worry about that. Now for this to work, you have to have a collider on whatever object you're using. In this case, we're going to just add an area. Uh, you don't really need any other physics objects. And you add that to the Sprite 3D. Now we're going to add a simple collision shape to the area. And actually, if you look at the sprite, it's pretty much just a box. So sprite 3Ds are really just for rendering 2D objects in a 3D world. So it's pretty straightforward. And we're just going to make sure you grab the extents of your collision shape and shrink it so it's about whatever you're looking for on your shape. Uh, we've added the script already. For the area, something you're going to want to do is make sure input ray pickable is on and you probably want input capture on drag as well. That's not always the case, but just double check and make sure. Uh, this At this point you would want to set your collision layer if that's what you're looking to do. And actually at this point this thing will be movable, but let me go over what exactly the script is doing in the first place. There are a few different ways to handle this. What I actually like to do is I like to put uh, this script as a standalone script in my scripts folder and then inherit it whenever I'm adding to shapes or to different things in my 3D scene. And the reason for that is that all this can be handled by default. You don't really need to mess with anything here in general. A uh, few things that you might have to are the uh, the way that I'm self-identifying, I'll get into that in a little bit, but in general, <coughs> you really just don't need it, except to inherit from it, and then you're good to go. Uh, one thing to note also is I have this in extending spatial. You might want to change that if there is something in your script that you need that <coughs> requires specific access. So for example, if you were setting the texture when they clicked on it, you would actually need to have this inherit from Sprite 3D because Spatial doesn't have a texture on it. It doesn't really make any sense. 
Next up, you can see I've got some signals here, tapped and released. I've got the variable card passed in. That is actually just my name for it. You can name it whatever you want. Mine is card because I'm actually making a three-dimensional card game out of Godot, and that was a useful name for it. I've got is tapped. This is useful for the purposes A of emitting my signal. So I use a property setter for that. But also it lets you say, well, if they've let go of the, the tapped uh, action, then we can go back to being in a normal state and stopping, you know, actually checking all this information. I have one other thing here, should process touch, and that is just so that you can set whether or not this should be touch enabled from outside the script. So if you have these objects and you want to uh, not allow these to be moved, let's say uh, you move something into an area that it's disabled and you're no longer allowed to use it, then you can set this to false and it will no longer process all of these uh, actions. Now how this works internally, this little script, is pretty straightforward. We find the mouse position using get viewport, get mouse position. This is a two-dimensional object. It's a vector two. Uh, and the reason for that is your screen is always in two dimensions. There's, as yet, not really any such thing as a three-dimensional screen. So your mouse position is always going to be in 2D. Then you get the camera, and that, in this case, is just going to pull this camera off automatically. It's the only camera in the scene. We're going to say pro project ray origin from the mouse position. That takes the actual origin of the camera and projects this position into it. So you actually have where the mouse position is with respect to the camera. Then we have a ray two. And that just goes ray from project ray normal mouse pause times 100. And the idea is this one gets projected forward into whatever, wherever your camera is facing. So it's normal to your camera. In other words, it's perpendicular to your camera's uh, area of view. So in this case, it's going straight out forward 100 units. Um, the reason that's relevant is array is just sort of, people like to associate it with vision. I prefer to use my finger simply because of uh, low vision folks. Uh, I prefer to make it easier for them to understand. If you have your finger in front of your face and you move out with it until you touch something, that's what a ray is doing. And Godot makes getting a ray really, really simple. You can just get your direct space state off the world and then call intersect ray. You pass in the variables we made before, ray from, ray to, and it will just shoot that ray into the screen from the camera automatically. Now, if it hits anything, this selection, the variable that gets returned from intersect ray, is actually a dictionary. It's a full dictionary with a whole bunch of options in it. I recommend you just look that up. It's pretty straightforward. Um, so I'm just saying, if you got a selection, in other words, if anything was hit, if nothing was hit, this won't exist. So uh, be careful with that so you don't use it when it's in an invalid state, basically returning null. Um, but you're going to want to have some way to identify it to make sure that what you've tapped on is what the script is attached to. So in this case, I'm just saying if the name of the item that is tapped on is equal to the collider's parent's name, in other words, you have whatever gets collided with, the actual uh, area in this case, uh, look at its parent, so in this case Sprite3D, and get its name. In this case, it's Sprite3D, so Sprite3D is equal to Sprite3D. This will work for anything because you do not, it's not allowed to, uh, you're not allowed to have two objects of the same exact name at the same level of the hierarchy. So you should be fine using this, but if there are other ways you want to do this, feel absolutely free to change this. All I do is set self dot is tap to true. That fires off the signal for tapped. Then we get the local mouse position. So we say, where is it for the selection dot position? So because it's a dictionary, you can just access the position. This is basically where you've clicked on the object itself. And because to local, it actually converts it to a mouse position. And then you just call translate and give a vector three with whatever coordinates you're going to use. Now, 
I believe you will get back the Z coordinate for this, but I've found it to be, you pretty much almost never actually want to do that, use that at all. And the reason is most of the time you're not with a click, you're not moving something into or out of the screen. Um, that said, if your orientation is such that you, you're using the Z axis for some relevant purpose, things that you might do that like a football game if you're throwing a football you might want the up to go down the z-axis because it's down the field then you're actually going to move the two mouse pause dot y over to here and that will often be the case for things that are at angles so if it's not a complete top-down perspective you may want to do that and yeah, otherwise this stuff is uh, pretty straightforward. This should work now. Let's go ahead and give it a shot just to, just to see. Yeah, I mean, as you see, whatever you do. Now you can move fast enough it loses it, but that's just a matter of processing power and a few other things. So right now there are no requirements here. Everything just moves fine. Now I'm gonna show you how to use a simple uh, 3D object. It's a very similar approach actually. The way I have it built, um, I'm going to make a uh, just a simple mesh instance here. We're going to give it a capsule mesh. I'm going to move this over because I don't want it covering up my ambulance. Um, all we're going to do here, we're actually just going to leave it as is. Remember you need a collider though, so we're going to go ahead and add, in this case let's just add a kinematic body. It doesn't matter, you could add an area to this also, um, but I'm just going to use a kinematic body. We're going to leave input rate pickable on. All these things should be fine. I think we're going to set, let's see, up and down is, if we go look at our transform, up and down is the Y axis, so uh, we're just going to lock the Z so it doesn't move in that direction. Um, we're going to go ahead and add our collision shape. Uh, just a capsule, capsule shape and you can see because it's the defaults they're the same size. And all we're going to do is because this is our physics body rather than area, we're just going to go and add a script to the mesh instance. We go find our script and we run it. As you can see, everything works just fine. You can see some pretty cool, pretty cool effects there. You can see like the 3D-ness. Now, one thing that's a little bizarre that I'm just going to point out as a quick thing before the end here. Um, you'll see it works fine if I'm moving this. But because we're using a ray and it's looking sort of from the front of the camera, so in other words, like here, it's gonna pick and it's projecting outwards. It's gonna stop at the closest thing to the camera that it finds. So when we're doing this, that's fine because the capsule shape for this is always closest to the camera. The problem is if you have this and you move it behind this, it's not always the closest, so it switches over to this thing. And that's a little bit annoying, but there are certain ways to work around that. Um, if you want tutorials on that, let me know, and I will happily do that. Usually I've found it's the case that if, uh, if you're making something in 2D that's in a 3D environment, you're not really <clears throat> using 3D objects like this that are movable, but you know, if you have any questions, feel absolutely free to uh, ping me here or on Twitter, Kyle the Coder, or on Facebook. I'm completely open in all the groups. You'll see me posting a lot. And uh, there's not too much else. The one thing to note is sometimes you're going to have your kinematic, kinematic body as the parent, and you're going to have the mesh instance under it so that when you move the kinematic body around using you know whatever options you're choosing or maybe it's a rigid body, whatever it is, um, you need to change the script so that here, instead of saying get parent.getName, it's just the collider.getName. Um, and then you would have the script.
script on the collider itself. On the, uh, excuse me. And then you would have the script on the physics body itself rather than on the mesh instance or the sprite 3D. So that's all. Uh, I think, I hope, uh, this script really helps you out and makes it a lot easier to use. I've updated it so it's uh, got the latest and greatest and yeah, feel free to let me know if you have any problems or have any questions. Thanks. Have a good day. Bye.